Job chapter 4. Then Eliphaz, the Temite, answered and said, Chapter 3, Job finally breaks down of seven days and seven nights, and he puts out his bitterness, he puts out his complaint. Uh, he has a right, he's been touched, he's been, he's been broken. Now, what you're not supposed to do. The Bible says, weep with them that weep, rejoice with them that rejoice. You got to be very careful when somebody's going through troubles and that you, James says that you open up that tongue of fire of hell. The worst thing you can say is, well, I know what you're going through. There are no true troubles that are alike. There are no two people alike. And it's absolutely wrong for you to tell somebody that I know what you're going through if you don't. Best thing is to be there, weep with them, speak when they ask you something. A lot of pastors and just do, they just sit there, and that's the best comfort that you're you're there. You don't have to say nothing. I'm going to read you the Scofield note about Elphaz. It says Elphaz is a religious dogmatist. Dogmat. Dogmat whose dogmatism rests upon the mysterious and remarkable experience. Verses 12 through 16 will go through. Did a spirit ever pass before Job's face? 12 through 16 we'll get to. Did Job's hair of his flesh ever stand up? Then let him be meek while one so superior as Eliphaz declares the causes of the mis his misfortune. Eliphaz has many true things as do the others, and often rises in eloquence, but he remains hard and cruel, a dogmatism who must be heard because of one of his remarkable experience. Now, experience is nothing when it comes to Christianity. Experience is, is charismatic. Oh, I can speak in tongues, I can do this, I can do that. And you can be cruel by your speech. If we essay, it means to examine, to commune with thee. Well, they made an appointment to come see him. They didn't say anything about, uh, we're going to see. They're going to hit on Job, and God is going to rebuke these three guys. We already know the end of the book. I'm not going to give it away. I mean, I'm going to give it away so we can study. God rebukes these guys. He tells them to make a sacrifice. So what, what we're saying here is it could be right, but it's wrong. I can go knock on doors and tell people go build an ark. It's right, but it's wrong. Wilt thou be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? You are to withhold yourself from speaking. No one asks Eliphaz to, to speak. And we don't know the, 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 from Job chapter 3, 26 to 4, 1. We don't know that time frame. Was it instant? Probably was, knowing man. Job he said, yet trouble came. And then Eliphaz, you know, he spoke. Behold, thou hast instructed many. True. We learn that Job is in the city gate. He's a ruler. He's a judge. True. What did that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with his lost? And thou has strengthened the wicked thou has strengthened the weak hands. True. He did. We're going to read that, Lord willing. Thy words have upholded him that was falling. As a judge, yes. And thou has strengthened the feeble knees. True. Everything is true. Right on. Problem is, the big fat tongue keeps speaking. If you were to just stop there, chapter 4 would be over. Okay. Yes, Job, you're a great judge. You're, you're a great person. You help the people out. What's that have to do with Job's life? That's going on right now. Absolutely not. He's talking the talk. It's a very true statement, but it has nothing to do with nothing. 
It's like, uh, you know, you're in a classroom. The teacher, is, you know, she's up there teaching about uh, math, teaching about multiplication. The student raises his hand and goes, yes, I like peanut butter cookies. Yeah. So, little children, little children who want attention will do that. I mean, they'll go through, in the story, they're going through this museum, and they got all kinds of bones, they got all kinds of science stuff, and they're just great. It's history, it's science, all that. And at the end of the thing, a little boy says to the teacher, get back in the bus. No one says anything about my brand new code. Wait a minute. Of everything that you saw, all you're worried about is what you got to say and what you have. All right. I can't say paragraph mark that it may be wrong but verse six is not this thy fear we'll go back which one okay verse five but now it has come upon me <laughs> is that now it's come upon me rub it right in his face he took care of all these people but now it's in your face yeah, but don't you think that Job maybe used a little tactic, used a little grace, a little mercy dealing with people? I mean, he says all this good stuff, then boom, throws his face right through the ground. Thou has come upon thee, and thou faintest. Well, tell me somebody who didn't lose his property, didn't lose his children, didn't lose his wife, is now in great pain and misery, and, and there's no cure for him. Tell me you're not going to faint and break down. So he's accusing Job of chapter 3. You just spoke stupidly. You had no being to say that. You can strengthen all these people and you curse the day you were born. It touches thee and thou art troubled. Job lost it all. What's this guy ever faced in life? Is not this thy fear? You run back to chapter 325. Job said, For this thing which I greatly fear has come upon me. Job already admitted, This is what I feared in my life. So he throws it back in his face. You think Job wants to hear it again? Thy confidence. Well, he didn't say confidence. He just said, This is what I fear. Thy hope. Thy uprightness of thy ways. What? He's talking about all the material goods he lost. He's talking about his children he lost. Joe's in seven days, seven nights, morning, and this guy just adds more to the fire. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished, uh, ten children, being innocent, Oh, man. Job, your, ch your ten children died without any cause. Well, just get the alcohol and pour it over him, okay? Get the rubbing alcohol and just dump it over his head. Add more pain to insult. Back when I was a kid, my mom, would, 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 she, she'd get the iodine. Ooh, that stuff burned. You ever read in Proverbs where, where, where Solomon talks about wounds out of the mouth? There's a stupid saying out there that we said when we were kids, and it's stupid now I'm growing up in the Bible and a minister to work. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Yes, they do. You tell a woman she's ugly enough, or tell her she's stupid enough, and eventually within time she's going to believe it. You tell a child of yours that they'll never amount to nothing and keep on saying that and keep on saying it, it's going to happen. Adolf Hitler had more power out of his mouth than he did with a gun. Being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen, 
They that plow iniquity. Oh, man. He says, Job, it's your fault. You are in iniquity. You are plowing iniquity and so right wickedness. Everything happened because your iniquity, Job, all the animals gone, all the death, all the, the troubles that are happening is because your iniquity and that's wickedness. Job's children died because Satan wanted to prove a point to God and this guy's eyes was wickedness. Now, later on, we're going to learn that these happened to Job because he was self-righteous. God needs attention. But right now, the point is Satan wanted to destroy Job, and God wouldn't allow him. It's not an iniquity. It's not that Job was a wicked man, because we're told in Job 1, we're told in Job 2, by God himself. And the Holy Spirit is recorded that he is true to evil. He was perfect. He, he feared God. Where is iniquity in that? I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow righteousness reap the same. Okay, Galatians 6, 7, that is a Bible foundation truth, but does not apply to Job right now. So you can quote scripture, you can be Mr. Bible-minded person, Mr. Bible big head, Mr. Bible PhD, I know from Genesis to Revelation, walk up to somebody and say the wrong thing and ruin their life. And a preacher is known for foolishness because his mouth is always going. Somebody comes up to you and asks you a Bible question and you don't know the answer. You give some stupid answer out of the Bible because it's scripture. You have maybe ruined their faith instead of saying, I don't know. Eliphaz should have said, I don't know. How do you do that? He should never open up his mouth. No one prays. Get you that. Job doesn't pray. Eliphaz doesn't pray. He's going to set things straight in Job's life while he's grieving and mourning. That's not how you fix a car. When somebody comes in with a car and says, listen, I'm a problem with the car, a mechanic will take the car out in the street, listen to it, see what he can do, and then he brings it in the shop, he turns it off, Maybe hooks up to some machinery or whatever, computers, all that. Then when it is silent, when it's off, then he begins to take it apart and work on the problem. He doesn't work on it when it's on the road. By the blast of God, they perish. Who killed Job's children? Satan did. And this guy is your typical human being. I had to think of a word there. You say, what do you mean? Everybody blames God. Everyone. Don't you don't you say, Oh, I never do that. Yes, you have. Isn't that true? The blast of God they perish. That's the truth. God is in control, we saw. God allows Satan. But this is not what Job wants to hear right now. You know what that's going to do to That's only going to get him madder at God. Maybe destroy. Now, we know, the, we know the book of Job. So I'm trying to talk about somebody you're dealing with. Somebody you know. You may get them angry at God and they'll walk away from God instead of be corrected and learn what God wanted them to learn. So your big mouth, if they're being chastised by God because they're bad, your big mouth may choose them to walk the path that God don't want them to do and do a complete repent the wrong way. I had a friend the other day, it seemed like he was going through, all I said to him was, are you okay? That's it. He never responded to me, so it's, it's none of my business. 
It's trouble. None of my business. By the breath of his nostrils, they are consumed. Now he's referring to the whirlwind. But by the breath of God's nostrils, what did Genesis chapter 2 say? God breathed. This guy is telling you that every tornado, every whirlwind is when God goes, what, boogers? If God has boogers, holy boogers? Holy sneeze? Every time God sneezes, <laughs> oh man, I didn't mean to have that tornado. Bring that, no, bring that tornado. Oh man, I gotta stop sneezing up here. And he's wrong, but he's right. Satan did it, but we know God allowed him to do it, and it had nothing to do with God's nose. The roaring of a lion, Satan. Your adversary, uh, the devil, goes about seeking who he may devour as a lion. And the voice of the fierce lion. Oh, so God comes first, then then Satan. Now, uh, yes, yes, yes. But in the eyes of Job, who doesn't have a Bible, what does talking about lions have to do with his children? What's it have to talk about? Uh, what? Okay, the Sabians came, uh, the Chaldeans came, and uh, fire from uh, fire from God came down. Are you telling me that I lost something else by lions? Don't. Uh, that's not news I want to hear. Well, we know it's Satan. And the teeth of young lions are broken. Well, they can't be used. They're growing new ones. The old lion perished for lack of prey. No food. He's too old to chase it. Well, lions travel in packs. They help each other, as far as what I've seen. And the stout, which means strong, young lion whelps. Are scattered aboard. What that has to do with Job and lions, I don't know. Now, 12 to 16, revelation by a dream. Now, dreams in the Bible, Old Testament, we've studied before, is because they don't have a complete Bible. So God spoke to him in dreams, he spoke to him in visions. Because uh, Mark chapter 16 tells us that the scriptures, the Bible was not complete. They had to have it. Now, 12 to 16, we really don't know if this was the truth or not. Like Jacob one time, he, he tells his wife, okay, it's time to go. I had this dream of, and it, of Jacob's life has got to be like, <laughs> okay, Jacob, you say so. I mean, you've been a swindler your whole life. Okay. I mean, I mark my Bible to what God says and stuff like that. And that one i got to leave alone because I don't know if God said it. I don't know if this guy really said it. He did. He may, he may not have said it. But listen to this. Now, what he's telling through 12 through 16 is, I had experience, Job. What about you? I had experience, too. I just lost everything. My wife just ratted me out, and I'm over here picking myself with, 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 with scabs and everything. What more do you want me to do? Dream? Do you think, you think Job wants to hear about dream? Do you think he can sleep? He's got to roll around more than I do. He's in pain. Now a thing was secretly brought to me. Ooh, I was in New York, and, and this angel Bologna came down and gave me these big old sunglasses and these, these golden tablets that no one's ever seen but me. Hey, and, you know, and Jesus came over here to a bunch of Native Americans with Hebrew names. Secretly brought to me. 
and my ear received a little thereof. <laughs> he just told you, I received this thing. I didn't take it all in. <laughs> it wasn't so important that I only just took part of it in. And thoughts from the visions of the night. Maybe too much pepperoni pizza. I mean, I've had visions of the night, and I've got to get up in the morning and repent sometimes. When deep sleep falls on man. Oh, I wish for that. I'd love to have one good night of just deep sleep. No dreams, just sleep. Fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. I thought he said deep sleep. My legs do that when I'm not even sleeping. Then a spirit passed before my face. So there was there there are there are spirits in the Bible. When the fishermen are on the sea and they see Jesus walking, they they say we thought it was a spirit. The hair of my flesh stood up, goose pimples. He's frightened. It stood still. Was it Martin Luther that Jesus Christ came in his bedroom and he took an inkwell and threw it at him? Um, Jesus Christ, you wouldn't come here right now. Get out of here. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. So it had no shape. God, you offer confusion? The image was before my eyes. There was silence. And I heard a voice saying, now this is what supposedly the Spirit said. Shall mortal man be more just than God? No. That's true. Shall a man be more pure than his maker? No way. Only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in the church age. Only by the finished work of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of, of three days and three nights coming out of that grave alive, had made pure that he could take the captives out of Abraham's bosom. And it's kind of interesting, the fact is, when we get to glory, we're going to have a glorified body with no scars, no marks, but Jesus Christ is going to have scars and marks. Jesus Christ, who was clean, who was sinless, who was pure, had a perfect body, is now marked in heaven because of us. And we don't have no marks. Now, was this the Holy Spirit speaking or anything else? I don't know. It's the truth. Well, let me ask you a question. How much truth did God, I mean, did Satan tell Eve? How much truth did Satan speak to Jesus on the mountain? Satan does speak truth. You guys watch out for that little lie in there. That's what will do the damage. Now, I don't know who says. I don't know what this spirit is. I'm going to say. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know. Behold, he put no trust in his servant. He trusts us with the gospel to go tell others. He doesn't trust the angels with it. No angel can preach the gospel. So I don't know about that one. Now you can't trust a man to save another man or a man to save himself. And his angels he charged with folly. All of them. I read only a third of them followed after Satan. At least a third of them. There are angels right now that love the Lord and love Jesus Christ and, and love all the heaven. Where's the folly in that? How much less in them, I guess the angels are the servants, that dwell in houses of clay. Okay, that's us. 
whose foundation is in the dust, which are, which are crushed before the maw, decaying. Our bodies decay. Most of the Old Testament saints were never given the resurrection. The, they were never given what happens after death and resurrection. They were never told about Abraham's bosom, but they were told about hell. When you read, when we go through Job and you read Solomon, there are things said in there like, well, how come he didn't know where he was going? How come he made a statement like that? And the book of Ecclesiastes is a book that where people use to prove the Bible wrong, but that book was written worldly vision. As a man on this planet walking around with his eyeballs and writing what he sees, that has no heavenly vision at all. They are destroyed from morning to evening. True. Man dies. Men are dying right now. Men have died. And men will die. Unless the rapture happens for the born again Christian. They perish forever. No. 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 Now, I don't believe where the Holy Spirit will tell you or tell this guy, don't perish forever. Because we know later on through the New Testament, we know what happens even back in the Old Testament. Those that did right go to Abraham's bosom. Those that did wrong went to hell. They're not perish. Samuel's called by name and shows up to King Saul. Abraham is called by name in Luke 16. Lazarus is called by name in Luke 16. They're not forgotten. They're not perished forever. Now, in the sense of, of, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish. That's a man who does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, and that perishing as you, you perish from God's Holiness, you perish from God's presence. You perish from God's uh, fellowship. You perish into hell. You'll never see God again. That's why it's called darkness. They perish forever. Tell me where it says, you know, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you perish forever. No. Only those that don't do what God tells them to do. So you see the half-truth there? Without any regarding it. You just see what that guy just said? Did you just get the insult? People perish. Who just perished in Job's life? His children. He just told them, you'll never regard it. In time, you'll forget about them totally. Well, there are people, if we were new to Florida by a couple years, if we were going to a cemetery and walk around and read the tombs, okay, we don't know who they are. Someone did. And there may be stupid people living today that will go visit a graveyard and knows who that person is. Now, all the other world may not. Someone did. And also, without any regarding it, what does the Bible say about a saint that dies? God said it's, it's pleasant to him. It's a joyful thing for his saints to die. We go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Hey, our body may be down here, buried in a tomb, but in with heaven, hey, we're glorifying God. How can you say not regarding it? What about the rich man in Lazarus in the book? I mean, the rich man in hell, and Luke 16. I think I put the, I think I put Lazarus in hell before. Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. The rich man in hell. What did that rich man think when speaking to Abraham? After he wanted the, the dip of water, after he wanted mercy, after he wanted grace, what did he think about his family? And he was a dead one.
Does not their excellency which is in them go away? Some, yes. George Washington hasn't gone away. Benjamin Franklin hasn't gone away. Michael Luther King Jr. hasn't gone away. The Walt Disney's haven't, you know, they're maybe dying away from the Christian church. King James Bible hasn't died away, what he's done. Mordecai Ham, well, that may be a dying name going away among the church. Virginia, Virginia, Virginia uh, Valentine uh, Whiteman, that name may be dying away in the church. Obadiah Holmes. How about the names in the, in the proper hymnal? With all this new music coming up today. That's a name that's dying in the church. It's funny, how come all the worldly names are being lifted up? All the all the good names that are written in the Lamb's Book of Life are dying away. Job died and we know about him. And we can name his daughters. They die even without wisdom. Well, that's true. They didn't really know much in Old Testament about death. But this guy just speaks up and just takes the death of his children. Why did that need to be said? It's all your fault, Job. It's your iniquity and they died. And then, you know, now they're dead. You're going to forget them. Now, me, I've seen this spirit. Eliphaz, as a conclusion of this chapter we finish, I got words for you. Shut up! Too late. You know what? If Eliphaz went back and read this, what he said, you think maybe he would want to take his words back? Maybe a few of them? But for over 3,000 years, they are recorded by God. You got to learn a lesson from the book of Job, big mouths. Once you say it, you cannot take it back. I don't care all the flowers. I don't care all the candy. I don't care all the I'm sorry. I don't care what you do. You may be forgiven, but it's still there. And we're still reading what was said to Job in his misery. God's given us a lesson. When people are down and out, I'm surprised there's not a. I'm surprised there's not a cliche or a slogan out there. Don't be an Eliphaz. I should start that. Every time, I, every time someone speaks up, and they shouldn't they should speak up. You know, it's the truth. You're an Eliphaz. But most Christians wouldn't know what I'm talking about anyway. So why waste the words? We'll close there.